Okay, I'm going to show you the awesomeness of resources, okay? And what about resources in particular? Using item banks. So I'm in resources, you can see, this is how my collections are set up. I'm gonna go into my anatomy collection, okay? And into my intro to anatomy folder, because that uh, those banks are already set up for me. So I'm gonna open up my unit one assessment banks just to show you. I have um, right here, these banks are all set up um, based on the topics in my unit, okay? And they're all self-grading questions. Label image, highlight hotspot, multiple choice, fill in the blank, okay? All self-grading questions. The questions where I require them to like type an answer, okay? Um, I require them, since I'm science, I go through the claim evidence reasoning process and all of their short answer responses must follow that rubric that we have gone over, okay? So these are the essential questions listed um, on the unit guides by my district. And then higher level questioning, same thing. These are listed on the uh, unit guides by my district, okay? So this gives me options. So what do I wanna show you? What can you do with this now? So here is a unit one test assessment. So all I did, just so you know, all I did was in my resource, I'm still in resources, just add a resource, add an assessment. Okay, not a bank. When you need to make the banks, you have to do add item bank, okay? But right now I'm just showing you what you can do with the item banks. Um, if you want help with creating item banks, um, or um, a lot of people um, may have questions about this uh, image, how I got this here on my folder. If you have questions about any of that, let me know, and uh, I will try and answer them but let's go why banks are good. So I always start my tests and quizzes with just a simple add text, that's what this is. I just give them some basic directions because they can look back at those directions at any point. And if I wanna give them like a quick little reminder, sometimes I make a review video, sometimes I make a like, hey, you can do this video, they can access it right here. So here's the item bank amazingness. Now, if you share with your school or um, somewhere else, you share a group um, item bank, you can access it here, but mine is in personal and it's in anatomy. And I go to intro to anatomy and I open my unit one assessment banks. So the awesomeness of this is you can create a review test that has stuff from whatever units you want. It doesn't matter. So let's start with just the basics. Okay, now you see I can choose here. I can select all the questions. I can pick specific questions. Okay, I can um, choose specific ones. But what I wanna do is the, um, this feature right here, add randomized items. And I'm gonna pick three questions from each section. And I just want them one point each. I'm gonna add those items. You can see it shows up down here. I'm gonna go back to the banks. I'm gonna do the body systems, add randomized items, three questions, one point, add the items. Go back to the banks, do anatomy and physiology. Remember what I'm choosing here are all of the questions that are self-grading. I don't have to go back and grade these. They're all uh, self-grading. So multiple choice, um, true, false, as long as I have not chosen um, them to have to correct it. Uh, so body planes is the last one I did. Let's do body regions. So multiple choice, fill in the blank, highlight image label image, matching, all those kind of things that can be self-grading, all right? So body regions, body directions. The benefit of this, okay, is each student is going to get a completely different test, okay? The odds of, because I have enough questions in there, the odds of them getting the exact same questions is highly unlikely. See, this says 10 items, and I'm only picking three, and it's gonna be random, okay? Then what I wanna do on assessments. Now, if I was giving this as, say, a review assignment, I would stop there. I would not put anything that was higher level questioning. Save yourself some time. Those are all self-grading. For homework assignments, that's all I use. I make a homework assignment with like three of those um, lessons. Just use self-grading. But on the test, I'm gonna use some of these. And I'll say, okay, I want to have only two of the essential questions, and it doesn't matter, it's getting to the heart of the lessons. 
So I don't actually care which questions they get. Um, the higher level questioning was nine, um, but I'm still gonna have them choose two. So they have four questions where they have to uh, write a more detailed response. The rest are short answer. Now this ends up being a 28 question test. So I'm gonna say add the 28 items, okay? Now let me just move this here for a second. When I go to preview, okay, and I know this is showing you basically what the student format will look like. So remember how I said I like to start with just a message? This is where it shows up and it'll always be there for the first question. Now when I look, this is a level of organization question. This is a level of organization question. Now if you don't want it to show up in order like that, what you need to do, okay, is um, go to, um, when you go to intro to anatomy, uh, and I'm in the assessment, in the setup, okay, I say randomly order the questions, okay? Now the difference when I look at the preview in this case is I still automatically always have this first. That doesn't get switched around, but now, they're out of order. And that's what I prefer to do on tests is randomly order the questions, okay? Um, and there you have it. It's gonna go through all the questions and they're going to be in random orders, okay? Um, but it really helps to give students a unique test because they're gonna randomly pick questions from each section. Item banks, amazing. If you haven't tried them, Try them out. If you have questions, ask me. But I hope I taught you something new today.